Donuts. Welcome to the Dolls and Donuts podcast, episode 25. In today's episode, we're going to tell you all about what's going on in the animal rights community and what's been happening in Robin's Vegan Dollhouse. And well, hopefully we'll get to hear about your recent trip, too. Yeah, Ashley's Dollhouse, too. <laughs> Ashley's Dollhouse with wings is all I've been doing is sitting in airports for months, I feel like. Oh, are you putting everything on your blog? Uh, I'm going to. Okay. I was told today by the guy who checked me out at Michael's that I should be... Checked you out, like, physically no, or... <laughs> Sorry. That or was both? bad verbiage. Or both? What, what What do you say when someone's, like, ringing you up? No, that's right. I just didn't know what you were talking about. Yeah. <laughs> um, the guy who rang, rang me up. up yeah, yeah. He said that I looked like... That my hair resembled the b- princess from the My Little Pony. Like, the girl. The human. I, I feel guess. like you look like every My Little Pony, so I don't know. Oh, there's a <laughs> pony human in My there's Little Pony? There's a human. I feel I bad because I feel like I'm a poser. Like, I love My Little Pony, but I guess I don't know all the characters because I didn't know I there mean, was a little girl. I don't think I watched the show. I just played with the toys. Yeah, yeah. I like the toys. Yeah. So, so I guess... I don't know. think we're posers. Okay. We're keeping it real. Okay. My TV watching was very limited by my father, so... Oh, my brain. Half my brain had to be regrown for all the TV <laughs> I watched growing up. <laughs> didn't. Whatever. Like, eat junk food, not doing anything, watch a TV. That was my life. That was my childhood. Uh, You're like, we only got organic kale and <laughs> 10 minutes of TV, of educational TV a day. And I'm over here like, give me another pop. <laughs> That's why your house is the one everybody wanted to hang out at. That is true. No I one wanted that. to come to my house. <laughs> you guys want to come over and have some kale? Oh, God, tell her we're busy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there were so many things besides just the kale. My dad did weird stuff, and it's so embarrassing. <laughs> so embarrassing. I can't even say it on this podcast, but when we're done recording, I will tell you. Oh, I'm excited. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, so I was like, oh, too bad I was already at Michael's buying supplies for my Halloween costume, but maybe I'll do that next year, whoever this princess is. Oh, right. Yeah. Assuming my hair is still like that next year, it probably won't be. Yeah, it'll be in its ne- next iteration. So are you going to, what are you going to be this year? I'm being a voodoo doll. What are you being? Amelia Earhart. Do you know oh, who that is? Did she <laughs> invent the airplane? No. Did she? she is it something she, you, to you, do with aviation? Really? Yes. Okay. okay. Yes. Okay. I am proud okay. of you. Okay. Was she the first female pilot? No. Warmer. I'm getting warmer. Um, She's definitely the most famous female avi- like, aviator. Okay, so she, she did, crossed the Atlantic. She, she did something. She crossed the Atlantic. Airplane. Was she the first person to? I believe she was the first the female Atlantic. to cross the Atlantic. <gasps> I believe she was the first. She was going. She was attempting to be the first woman to fly around the world, and that's when she disappeared. Oh, she disappeared. Yeah, they never. They never found her. Oh, that's her horrible. and her um, like navigator. It, there was did another she guy fly in the plane into that with her. triangle where people disappeared. No, no. Oh. Is that a real thing or no? Is that just? It's a real area, but it's not a real thing. Oh, it's okay. fake. It's just a all myth. Those, all the stories, but are like the area of that, it, they say is the corners and stuff like that. That it's a real place, but there's nothing really there. Okay. It's just superstition and myth and okay. that stuff. There's nothing mm-hmm. real about it. Yeah, no. Um, she was like in the middle of the ocean. I can't remember which one, but she was supposed to land on an island called Howard Island. That she was she was going to ref. There's there's like a small population there, and that's something she was going to refuel. And he, her, it was like foggy or too cloudy. Like something wasn't great with the navigation. And he, the guy that was her navigator, I can't remember his name. I want to say like Fred or something. I can't remember. Uh, He couldn't, now he'd missed it or couldn't navigate or something. And they didn't find the island and they just had to keep flying around. And they could, they were communicating with people at this point on land and saying, you know, that they, they weren't seeing the island. They weren't seeing it. And eventually they ran out of fuel. They, well, there's lots of theories about what happened, mm-hmm. right? She was captured by the Japanese. She was stranded on the I- a different island and lived her life there. She just crashed, obviously. The most likely thing is that she just crashed into the water and died. Yeah. Um, but something that's interesting about going for his Halloween, my grandpa was part, he, he was in the Navy, and he was part of the search party looking for her mm-hmm. when she disappeared, which I think is cool. Um, anyway, I really like her. I have like, t-shirts of her, and I see her planes different places so when what I travel. So how are people going to know you're her? What does she wear? Or how does she look unique? Well, it, 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 she has a very, like, uh, aviation of that, aviation style of the time, and being a girl, or a woman, or a female, whatever, insert your gender-appropriate word there, um, it'd be pretty obvious. 
I'm doing something similar to this. Oh, do you have the goggles? I have the goggles. I have the hat. I have the jacket. I've got the scarf. I've oh, got dang. the pants, the boots. How do you have and all the white that? shirt? Did you buy most all of it? Place? I already owned. <laughs> really? Oh my god! I had to buy the goggles and the hat from like uh, Spirit or whatever. Oh, okay. When I was in Hawaii, we were at the um, uh, Pacific Aviation Museum, and they had this like bomber jacket, like really cool, like patches on it. And I was like, oh, one, that's probably leather, and two, it's probably four hundred dollars. Right. No, we even rang up as vegan leather. Like, actually, rang up vegan leather, and it was on sale from like one hundred and fifty to like forty dollars. Oh, I was, like, nice. This is so cool. I'll wear this. I don't care. Like, I didn't even think about it as a costume. Right. Um. And I have just kind of clothes that would work um, for her, for kind of her outfits. Um, so I just put it together. So I only really had to buy the two, the top, nice. the head pieces. That's awesome. Yeah, so it'll be fun. Have you thought about things mm. that you're going to make, like Halloween food? No, I need to think about that. I'm running out of time. And the thing is, I'm like, okay, like it's most fun to make like sweet Halloween stuff. Yeah. But then... And but then like, it's all sweet. Yeah. Yeah. Matt's like, so what's wrong with that? I'm like, well, if you want to eat something out, you want to come and like eat a meal, that could get, you know, you want the variety. Yeah. But you don't want to have to be the one that brings a salad. No. That's not fun. No, it's not fun. Maybe, maybe one of each. I will do that. Maybe. Well, you know, Kimmy always makes that vegetable tray that looks like a skeleton. Yeah. Okay. That, that's healthy stuff. <laughs> that ticks that box. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, kind of. <clears throat> you could make your stuffed peppers you always make, but you could carve out the jack o' lantern and the Oh, pepper. that seems like a lot of work. What? And they're, you make like, the stuffed peppers. You have anyway. to make a pepper for like, every person. I don't think so. I think people would share. Just like because there's a lot of food. No one eats a whole of anything in yeah. a potluck, except for me. <laughs> <laughs> but that, that one over there is mine. No one eats a whole cinnaholic mm. cinnamon roll. <laughs> I've never not finished one. <laughs> Yeah, I gotta start thinking about it because I do wanna make something cute, but then I also don't wanna bring. I, I know everyone's gonna wanna bring sweets, which is, yeah, that's why I go something more fun. Yeah. I'll, I'll have to think on it. I know, I need to think and about it. And I want something to be cute, and then I might I might make really like put my effort and try to make something really cute that's sweet, and then just literally bring something that's not Halloween themed, that's mm-hmm. savory. Yeah. Just so there's something else to eat. I might do that, and that's easy, mm-hmm. and then put more effort into the, the cute sweet thing. Yeah. Okay, we'll take pictures. Thanks for talking this through. Cute thing. <laughs> that's I think what I'm I know. Here for. I think I know what I. I think I'm that's having what I'll a planning session tomorrow night <clears throat> to figure out all the food that I'm going to make for the party I'm going to, which I'm basically going to be in charge of making all the food so I can. Well, make how do you sure get yourself vegan. into these things? I mean, I don't. Ha- I well, I don't have to. It's just fun for me. I know, but sometimes <laughs> you're like, oh, I've got all this going on, and I have to do this, and I'm like, why do you say yes to everything? I know. Because it all sounds fun. Yeah. And I want to do everything. Yeah. I just forget that I'm only you one little person. book yourself, I think. <laughs> yeah, I do. I do. I haven't even started making my costume yet. Yeah, I mean, it's actually... Actually, I got, like, the the pants... My pants for my costume. I just bought from Out Urban Outfitters, and they were $100, and they were on sale for 5 bucks. How is that possible? And I was like, these are so cute, and they, like, are almost, like... Is there something overalls? wrong with them? That's what I, I like looked and looked, and I was like, oh, I think these are tagged wrong. Because I didn't want to like take them down, and then, oh, $70. Yeah. That's why I asked for And they're like, well, it's probably fine. It's probably it. It's probably just, like, it's literally the last one we have. Mm. So we just want to get rid of it. Yeah. And I didn't see any other. Because, you know, in the clearance rack, they have, like, maybe, like, 10 or 5 of the mm-hmm. same. There are more than one. This was, like, the only one. And I was like, oh, so I tried so it on. You're so good at finding deals. Okay. I'm okay. But that, it's like, they're, like, just, like, khaki-colored overalls kind of but they have like buttons here and then they come up like that and i just bought those because i thought they were cool and I, but then i got found this cost when i thought about this costume i was like oh those would be good and i have my brown boots and everything Woo-hoo. i could just wear this <laughs> i would just wear this walking down the street honestly <laughs> that's how i want to live my life as Amelia Earhart, minus them disappearing in the ocean but so it's gonna be good and i'm actually debating on wearing my costume to work this year i never do the work costume party thing i go to the party and i like because uh-huh, i don't have to sit at my desk you know what i mean i'd rather mm-hmm. sit there and look at all the food i can't eat um they don't have vegan stuff for you at the they, Halloween party? not at, no if if marketing like my department because my my manager is vegan if we're involved in anything we it's always like heavily vegan and vegetarian if the office just takes care of it rarely is there anything mm-hmm. it's too bad. for me so I, but I still like go and sit and socialize and they always have a costume contest and they actually have pretty good prizes like spa, gift cards and stuff. Mm-hmm. I might do it this year. 
Yeah, why wouldn't you? I don't know, because it's weird. I don't know. But this is like a more like, I don't know. I might do it. You should. I'll report back if I win. Okay. I mean, I've won Best Costume at Kimmy's two years in a row. Yeah, so no. I feel like I'm, I could probably do okay against my coworkers. Yeah. I mean, do they go all out? or? A couple of people do. Oh, okay. A couple people. I mean, I'd be happy if I even came in like third or whatever. Yeah. It's time to got something. Those people. You don't want them to get comfortable being the winner every year. Yeah, they, I think that's what's happened. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, and it's something I can walk around in all day and not look like a fool. Like, if you're not in your costume, you know, yeah. like it's like in the middle of the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I don't know. I'll think about it. Yeah. A lot of people That's change it. for the party. Yeah. If they don't, if they have a costume yeah. that makes them look a fool. Yeah. Mine's, this isn't, so I feel like I yeah. could do you it. Yeah, you could. You'll be comfy. Yeah. In all your normal clothes. <laughs> <laughs> Just <laughs> walking here. around looking like Amelia Hart, like every day on Tuesday. <laughs> Uh, by the time this comes out, Halloween will be over. It will be over. And it'll be, people will start thinking about Thanksgiving already. Yeah. Maybe we should talk about Thanksgiving instead. Yeah. Considering we haven't even planned for Halloween, I don't think we're it's quite there. Just, I know, now that I'm back from Ohio, I went to Ohio, I didn't mention this on the podcast because I was surprising my dad, so I didn't want to talk about going there, um, but I went and I'm back, and now that that's over, that trip's over, I need to start planning for our trip to Vegas for Thanksgiving. I need yeah. to start thinking what we're going to do and... Where we're going to eat and the new places and all that. So I know where we're going. I just don't know what we're doing. That's, yeah, that tends to be how things go. The food, I always have that, like, pretty well sorted out. It's like all the in-between eating ideas. Yeah, yeah what I, are we going to do I'm... between eating? Like, that's <laughs> the hard thing. That's basically life as a vegan. Yeah. Like, what are you going to, we have to live between the next two meals. What are we <laughs> going to do with our time? We have to do something. So, yeah, it's fine. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to c- convince my parents to do Thanksgiving at their house so that I can just cook food here and bring it there. We'll see. Were you gonna have it here initially? Yeah, because they are just got this weird RV thing, and so now they just want to camp all the time. And I'm like, cool, <laughs> bye. <laughs> have fun with that. <laughs> um, so I haven't decided yet where I'm doing it, but I'll probably make my same tofurkey that I make every year which the recipe's on my website if anybody wants to make it at home. Um, and I always make my same stuffing. I'm very predictable when it comes to that, but I like to mix up the desserts. Well, it, you only, it's only like that kind of crazy meal you have once a year, so why, why mess with something that works? It's right? like you have it every Friday or something. Yeah, exactly. So keep it, keep it stick with the classics. That's what I think, too. <clears throat> yeah. I just need to think about a cute dessert to make that's different. I'm like, what animal is it going to look like? <laughs> It could it could be it could be something more grown up I guess and not look like an animal. I did really like my little pumpkin cheesecake bears that I made one year. Oh, were, okay, yeah. Those I can really remember cute. hearing about those. I wouldn't mind making those again. Enough years have gone by that it's not boring yet. I love pumpkin anything. I'm down for that. I would I vote for anything pumpkin. I love it. Are you like one of those people who goes to Trader Joe's and gets everything pumpkin flavored? Pumpkin flavored O's? No, but I, I I love pumpkin anything. Like Oh my oh. god, I just thought of another whimper. For okay. wagon whimper. Oh no, is it something pumpkin? Yeah. Ah, <laughs> that's gonna be a wag for me. I don't even care what it is. <laughs> you don't get to have a wag if you don't try it. <laughs> I I will. Have, I have a little bit left. I could make you try it. And then you could agree with me that it's a whimper. Mm. <laughs> I'm that per- Like, we never, like, bought a ton of pumpkin stuff growing up, but I, like, lived for pumpkin pie at Christmas yeah, and Thanksgiving. Same. Like, we never had it, but I was like, oh, my God, this is, like, my favorite part of this whole thing because I'm getting pumpkin pie. Pum- I could have pumpkin more than just two days a year as a kid, but we just never got it. We just never... Yeah. I wasn't exposed to it, it, but I realized, like, how much... Looking back, how much I was obsessed with pumpkin because I would have my pumpkin pie... Like, those two holidays. And I, I love pumpkin. I love the flavor. So. Pumpkin pie is so good. Oh. Yeah. I had a lot of pumpkin stuff in Ohio because all the places had, like, their, like, seasonal. Oh, my gosh. I went to uh, Santa Cruz on Sunday, and they had a sign for pumpkin pie, but they were all out, and I wanted to cry. And a vegan one, obviously. Yes. Oh, my God. You I had a pumpkin mean? pie. If you run out of the dessert, take the sign away. Yeah. I know. That I've had a few issues with that. It's appalling. I know. And especially when it's like written on a chalkboard. Just erase it. Yeah, it's not that hard. How hard is that? That's why you have it on a chalkboard. Yes. Or cross it out. Cross it out. Oh my God. I know. This is my problem with good karma in San Jose. Oh, do they do that too? (sighs) 
Are they out of things a lot? I'm sure if you like them, like you listeners, that's great. But I, I just, I give them two tries and I'm, two I, strikes you're you out. You know what? Me. I only go there for pie. I've never And they've pie. never been out of pie. It's a chocolate pie. It's really good. Ugh. And damn it. It's $3.14. For a whole pie? No, for a slice, but it's still cute. Is it only on pie day? Or always? Always. Oh my. Okay. Uh, well, too bad. I'm never going in there. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to live without it. Um, wow, really? I guess I just, yeah, I never eat there. I just go there for pie. So I haven't had the problems that you've had. Don't, don't. Just keep going for the pie. Okay. Yeah. Don't go there. There's enough places in that area, too, to eat at. I'm just never really in that area anyway, so I just don't care. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not frequently in that area either. At least not, like, during meal times. It's, like, yeah. at night to go to a show or something. Um, okay, well, that was a lot about us. Maybe we should <laughs> Do we have anything else to talk about? No, let's just talk about Christmas now. <laughs> um, I think now it's time for Ask Ashley. That's me. So, what's been going on in the news with the animals? Okay, so we have all good stories. Yes. Happy dance, happy dance. I can't dance because I'm sore, but <laughs> I'm dancing in my mind. <laughs> She's been injured from... From evil exercise. exercise. Evil exercise, yes. Okay, so <laughs> our first story is from CNN, and the title is Gucci goes... Will, Gucci will go for free in 2018. I've heard this one. Did you hear this? Yeah. So um, if, for those of you that have been living under a rock most of your lives, um, it, it, Gucci is an Italian luxury brand that's very expensive stuff which i care less about but the point is they've in the past used a lot of fur like a lot of those like <clears throat> high street type of brands and, and labels so um they announced their their ceo announced that they are going to go for free starting in 2018 saying being socially responsible is one of gucci's core values and we will continue to strive to do better for the environment and animals with the help of the Humane Society of the United States and the Italian animal rights organization, Gucci is excited to take this next step and hopes it will help in sh- inspire, and innovate, and raise awareness, um, changing the luxury fashion industry for the better. Because, um, you know, fur, less so now, but fur has always been linked to luxury and prestige and station. Um, so that's something that's changing now. That, that's why all these, these brands use it, because that's what it's associated with. So we're seeing a slow turnaround um, <clears throat> in people not wanting to use this. Um, and then the Humane Society International said, Gucci going for, for free is a huge game changer. For this Italian powerhouse to end, end the use of fur because of the cruelty involved will have a huge ripple effect in the fashion industry, or the, throughout the world of fashion. Um, they say they commend Gucci's compassionate decision for helping to ensure that the future of fashion is fur free. Um, and they also go on to say that Giorgio Armani in 2016 announced they would go for free, um, which I didn't know that. I didn't know that Armani had gone for free. It has been now for about a year. Um, and also saying Vivian Westwood, Calvin Klein, and Ralph Lauren are also for free. Um, and Stella McCartney won, uh, was quoted, and she, she has a nice quote about this, who, if you don't know Stella McCartney, daughter of Paul McCartney. Oh, I didn't know. You, what? You didn't know that that's a daughter of Paul McCartney? I have never heard of Stella McCartney before oh. until right now. <laughs> okay. I, that's okay. I thought it was like the other, like you didn't know, like you knew who Stella McCartney was, but you didn't know that Paul McCartney was her dad. No, okay. I don't know who she she's is. A, she's a, you know who Paul McCartney is? Of course. Okay. <laughs> Just checking. <laughs> Just checking. They didn't have like a blaster of a clueless so corner. <laughs> yeah. You know what they say about assuming. Um, so Paul McCartney's daughter, Stella McCartney, is a designer. Oh, okay. fashion designer. Um, and uh, that whole family is like vegetarian slash vegan. So her whole line's vegetarian. So she said that um, real fur is extraordinarily old fashioned. That um, in even if you're 20 and you've got a real fur coat, you just look like an old, unaware, unconscious being on the planet. It's not relevant. It's not sexy. It's not fashionable. And it's not cool. I like that quote. I kind of agree with her. Yeah. Like, I feel like the only people who would wear something like that would be, like, 80-year-old ladies. Yeah. And they're all moth-eaten, yeah. old fur coats that yeah. they got in the height of their whatevers. Yeah. Yeah. It's so weird. Yeah. So, uh, I like that little quote, that little sassy quote by Stella McCartney. So, this is good. I mean, I mean, like I said, I didn't know about Armani, and just 2016, 
And then 2018 with Gucci, I mean, those are two huge brands. Yeah. So that's a good step forward. I mean, they, they're still using, as far as I understand, they're still using wool and leather, but for, you know... I wonder, it's though, if this could be too. a gateway. Yeah, oh, leather. yeah, definitely. I think it's going to be a gateway for those other materials that we don't really, we don't want them to use, and also just for other other um, brands brands to realize that they don't need to use fur because yeah. these brands are going to survive, and they will too, and they just mm-hmm. don't need it. And they'll probably not even survive. They will thrive because, you know, people that, tell me, like, we might not that I'm interested in these brands, but let's say I was, and I wasn't buying the certain piece that was otherwise vegan because they yeah. had leather, leather on it. Yeah, totally. Well, then I might be open to it now. Yep. You know? So, you know, it's something to think about. There's a lot of people who are vegetarian that I know who are into bag, like expensive bags that yeah. are all like made of leather. Yeah. I think those, like vegetarians aren't necessarily like anti-leather, I don't think. But I think if the, given the option, yeah. they would be way more into it. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's more like a, it could go either way with a vegetarian. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. vegans are like, no. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, so yeah, they, there's, there's a, they could open a whole market up for them. I that maybe so they too. don't really think about. Um, and it said also in the article that any um, furs that they still haven't sold, like at, at, at the end of the year, are going to be auctioned off. Um, and they're going to be like, I guess the proceeds are going to be donated. They didn't say to where. So any other, like still in their, like in their warehouse or still in the stores are going to be removed and auctioned. Hmm. So um, it didn't say for charity, but I'm assuming maybe that's what they're going to do. Or they're just going to keep them. I don't know. But they're like, no more. They're not going to sell anymore yeah. as of January 1st. You look, you have a question. I was just thinking, why don't they do <laughs> I must have the worst poker face. <laughs> I don't have a good one either, so don't worry about it. <laughs> You're like, I can tell you have a question. I can see the wheels turning. I was like, why don't says, they just donate them? To who? To poor, people. To poor get, homeless people that will get robbed because they're wearing real, a real leather coat. I mean, I mean there's so many. Yeah, coat. there's so many. They're always doing coat drives for people. Yeah. I, yeah. I would be fine with that. I think maybe... Since they're there, the, 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 it's done. The act is done. I feel like they would get more money. And I, I don't know. Like I say, I'm assuming they're, they would give it to charity. Like maybe donate it to a – I um, donate the money. This is what I would do if I was in their shoes. Auction them, get the highest price for them possible, and donate the money to maybe like a clothing um, – like some organization that gives functional coats to homeless people. Yeah. That would be a good thing. I think that would – Get the most impact out of what's already been done. Yeah, totally. Yeah. But if, I would be happy right, with either one. Letter. I'm going to tell oh. them what to do. Speaking of writing letters, we wanted to follow up on what we talked about last time, which was getting signatures. Yeah. Did you find out something else? Out? I emailed the chick. Shoot. I meant to check into this before we started recording, and I totally forgot. But I emailed her, and she said that she would get back to me. I don't think that they even have everything kind of lined up yet. Okay. Um, but she said she would get back to me this month. Okay, so what Robin's talking about is last month we talked about um, that California is going to need, uh, was it 250,000 signatures to get a new animal uh, welfare initiative on the ballot for two, uh, November 2018? I believe that was the right date. Um, yeah, I think it was November 2018, um, which is going to be a huge overhaul of um eggs and pork that can be sold in California, how it's raised. Even if it's not, if if it's from a different state or anything, if it comes in here and is sold, um, they are going to have way stricter um, welfare um, standards. So that's what we're talking about. If you want to hear more about it, listen to the last episode. But we didn't know much about how they went or how they were going to collect all these signatures. So we're keeping an eye on this to let you guys know. Zoe Novick um, from Humane League got back to me and said that they're going to start gathering signatures in early November. And she said that in San Francisco area, they're going to be doing trainings for volunteers mm-hmm. if they want to collect signatures. And the trainings are basically start right around now-ish and go through November. So I'm going to reply and say I want to sign up for a training. Yeah, so we'll keep... If we know of places the people are going to be hanging out, and you live in California, obviously... Um, we'll be sure to keep you guys updated on it. And then after we get the signatures, then we're going to, I definitely want to get involved in, um, like making sure people know about the, the, when it gets on the ballot, I definitely want to, to know about that for sure. So, um, 
Yeah, we'll keep you updated. On if that. any listeners are in the area and want to go out and collect signatures with us, let us know. Yeah. Email me at vegandollhouse at gmail. Dot com. Dot com. Dot. Ugh. My, did I tell you I broke my phone real bad? Because <laughs> no. I took it apart. I like how you said that. I broke it. I broke my phone real bad. <laughs> Stop taking your phone I, apart. You're going to kill yourself. I feel like I'm addicted to taking it apart, too, because the other day I, I got that message you get when, you're, when your storage is full. Uh-huh. And it was like, your storage is full. And I like said it out loud to Devi, and I was like, oh, my phone just told me my storage is full. And he was like, oh, so you, you, are you going to, what did he say? Are you going to like increase the storage? And I was like, oh, can you do that? And oh, he was no. like, oh, my God, you just got way too excited about the He's like, what have I done? Opportunity of I have awakened this, your this, phone the again. sleeping beast. <laughs> Oh man! Every time I take it apart, though, it like breaks a little more each time. Yeah, because you're not supposed to be taking it apart. I know. <laughs> I know. It's so fun to see the inside, though. Well, it looks okay right now. So. I mean, you'll see. I'll show you. Okay. How how bad it is. Oh God, Robin. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. Moving on to the next good story. Um, California. The the headline is California tells pet stories their dogs and cats must be rescues. That's did you hear about this? Amazing! I did not. That no. is so amazing. Oh my gosh! Okay, yeah. And I didn't even know that this was being pushed. This was like totally out of the blue. Yeah. I, other people may have been more enlightened than me. Wait, but are there other states that have done this? I've never heard. No, of this. we are the first state yes. to do this. So it says in a blow to commercial animal breeders and brokers, California pet stories will soon have to get their puppies, kittens, and rabbits from shelters and rescue centers only. So it's cats, dogs, and rabbits. That's awesome. Which is such a huge deal. Yeah. I mean, I can't even... That is so monumental. I mean, like, those kind of pet stores have been becoming more popular now. Like, they, they exist. Right, you know, yeah, They're yeah, just yeah. rescues. Mm-hmm. Um, and already before this happened, like, commercial animal sale pet stores have been have been declining. They've been going out of business. Okay. Um, so it says individuals can still buy from private, private breeders. But regardless, that's a huge, I mean, this is, this is a big deal. Yeah. Um, it says beginning in January, 2019, it will be illegal for stores to, to, to sell, so um, now. commercial animals, you know, as we know them today. Uh, violators will face a five to $100 fine. There are animals that star in commercials. You guys have heard of them, right? <laughs> Sorry. What did I say? Commercial animals. Oh. <laughs> They're like the famous animals. <laughs> like the Yokito Taco Bell dog. Yeah, they can't sell him anymore. <laughs> He's free. The bill had sub- had <laughs> the bill had strong support from several animal welfare organizations. Go figure, which um, cheered as a blow to puppy mills and kitten factories that mass produce mass produce animals for sale, often in in hum- humane conditions. Which you know, if you're into animal rights at all, you're not a stranger to this information. Um, and as we just said, it's the first state to pass such legislation, although. It does have, um, it does follow dozens of um, cities and jurisdictions that have passed similar measures on a smaller scale. So say like, like this is not the case, but say, oh, okay, Santa Cruz has passed this. Like there's been like pockets of this past, but like now oh. this is like a statewide um, law now. Well, it will, it will be, but this has passed. So um, they, there's a couple quotes just saying that, um, you know, this is removing Pet stores are only one step removed from the breeding of animals they sell. Store owners rarely know the conditions where their animals come from. Mm-hmm. Um, and it says, in many cases, puppy mills house animals in overcrowded and unsanitary conditions without adequate food, water, socialization, or veterinary care. Um, so, of course, the all these pet owners are in this article, uh, pet store owners, I should say, um, saying that the... Um, the law is well-intentioned but misguided, saying that they're comparing every pet store or every place that supplies pet stores as backyard dog breeders and all of this and blah, 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 blah. Um, <laughs> it's crimey river. I, I don't, whatever. Like I mean, it's well, there's facts. Are they yeah. going to argue with and the facts? And what is, like, I don't understand, like, you're still paying for the animal. Yeah. You're still going to, like, get, like, money which is what they care about so i don't really but you know what what kind of sums it up is this last quote i'm just gonna skip to the bottom from this pet store owner though this person um owns a store in california that's called puppy heaven that specializes in matching owners with tiny dogs 
teacup Yorkies and toy multi poos and has a celebrity clientele. So this is just prefacing this idiotic quote this guy has. So he says, quote, it takes the freedom of choice from people who want to get a puppy. They don't want to get someone else's unwanted dog or something of that nature. Um, they just want to start. They just want to start fresh with a puppy, and this law makes it very, very difficult. It doesn't, though. There are tons of puppies all the time. Are you that, kidding? And like someone else's unwanted dog, like Asshole. that shows how much he cares about like these animals. Oh, he doesn't care about animals because they're not like they're like br- they haven't been bred to like sit in your hand in your palm of your hand. They're so small, so like Paris Hilton can have one. Like it has to be Paris unwalk- Hilton that on- has that dog because it's gonna have so many fucking yeah. medical issues. Yeah. Like this dude. Like there you go. That just shows the intelligence and integrity of a, of this of this person. Um, like we they, people don't want they're like cast aside. Someone else doesn't. Not someone's cast aside dog. Like um, okay, you shouldn't have a dog, and that's how you feel. You know what? If you come to this guy's place and you don't want to shop there anymore because it's rescue dogs, then get out. You don't. You shouldn't have a dog. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? I'm just, that pissed me off. <laughs> um, so uh, they, he also said that it's going to encourage people to um, order dogs online or find sneakier ways to acquire the breeds they want. And you know what? That's probably going to happen. But it's going to totally still be the majority positive, right. I think, for this. Like, even like for me, personally, like, I got my dog Penny 11 years ago. She turned 11 in July. And I had no, I wasn't, it wasn't, I turned vegetarian the next year. So I had no idea of puppy mills or anything. I bought her from a pet land. I had no clue where she came from. Um, And I think even if people aren't aware, they go to a, they go to a pet store, they want to buy their dog or they want to buy their kids a dog. You know, they just, they're buying rescues. And like, I wish I had known because I would have loved, I wish, you know, I'm glad I got Penny, but you know, some people, they just don't think about it. The kind of person that's going to buy a pet at a pet store isn't educated. So that's mm-hmm. the exact person that we want to sell a rescue dog to. Yeah. It, like, makes perfect sense. Yeah. And the and people don't who are know. asshole dog haters who want to go and get their, like, specific breed, even though it's going to have medical problems for the rest of its life because it's so inbred, those people can still do that and through Craigslist or whatever. Yeah, and it says you can still do private, like, buy dogs privately exactly. or whatever. This is for the general population who just doesn't know any better. Yeah, exactly. And, just wants and to that's get a what I'm dog saying. Like I'm thinking family. of me walking in, yeah. like loving, loves animals, yep. best of intentions, walking into a pet store in Florida and buying my dog, and supporting this industry without knowing. Mm-hmm. So that's what I'm thinking of all these good, well-intentioned people that just have no idea that are buying animals every day in California. You know what I mean? So there you go. That I mean that's huge to me. So yeah. yay! yay. And then we have a little bit to wait. So this, now we I just mean, need landlords to stop discriminating against pit bulls. Yeah, yeah. But can you imagine like how this is going to help like the shelter overcrowding? Yeah, it's going to help a lot. And also, I was thinking about it while you were talking, and a lot of the shelters get stuck with the rejects from the puppy mills. So because puppy mills are going to decrease in numbers, I'm guessing because they can't sell to pet, pu- to pet in this, stores in this anymore. State for, yeah, by them de- by them starting to shut down, that's going to be fewer dogs in the shelters. Also, yeah, yeah, seems like a win win. Yeah, there's it's like a self fulfilling prophecy or some kind of weird cycle. Like you get a dog, some you know, this, I'm sure this situation has happened. You get a cute puppy that's sort of like freak like a freak essentially. It's really cute, but because it's been bred poor thing, its parents and its grandparents have been bred to like ridiculous standards and um they come home and like there's temperament issues or there's medical issues that they just can't deal with because this poor animal's been bred insanely and they go to the shelter because they can't they don't want to keep it. Yep. You know what I mean? And then it yeah, I didn't think about that. That's it just, it just goes around and round. I could see why that that would happen. So yeah, this, this is, is a huge mm-hmm. win. So it's and plus we're the first state to do it, which means other states are going to start doing yeah, it too. Hopefully, it's good. Yeah, and I'm sure like like they said in California, there's been little pockets of this has been passed like on a um, a city level, um, and I'm sure that's been the case for other parts of the country too. I don't know they didn't mention it, but I'm sure this isn't the only like I'm sure there's stuff outside um, of the state that have done this, but that's great because that's how this started too. Was like in like little pockets, and then it became a state law. So, I mean, and with again, like we talked about this last time, I think um, with us being the most populous state, you know, there's lots of people here, lots of people, lots of animals, you know, lots of do- pets. You mm-hmm. know, I mean, it just goes on and on. Like, 
This is like such a good thing to pass, and it's the best state I think right now for it to pass in. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's easy. It's it tends. I feel like it's easy to have a pet here because it doesn't snow. You don't have to be in a situation like I. Whenever I see people walking their pets in the snow, I'm like, oh my god. Oh my I'm god. So, it's it looks so hard. Well, they, they pets Being hate it too because I'm growing up. You're like, okay, guys, like yeah, backyard. Little jackets. We don't have a backyard. Like we'd have a fence in the backyard. You just open the door and they would all run out and everything. Mm-hmm. And they're like. And yeah, like, I don't want to go out there. Yeah. Like they just like try to put their paws up. Like some for a while, like some of our dogs would like run around. They love the snow. Like playing it, and they're like, I okay. Two seconds later, that. I'm like, I'm done. <laughs> it's freezing out here. It's like they don't like it either. So yeah, yeah. So this is this is so good. Um, all right. It's third fun and happy story. Well, I guess it's not bad. Let's put it that way. So the headline is McDonald's is testing a vegan burger, and it could come to America soon. So. I'm among the McDonald's haters of the world. Like, same. You know, you don't probably need to elaborate for many reasons. It's probably Wait, obvious why I don't like McDonald's. Do they already have a vegan burger? Like oh, here, burger right now? Does. Oh, I don't but know. But not McDonald's. I don't know. Uh, McDonald's doesn't. Oh, I mean, okay. this is the first I've heard of anything at McDonald's. Okay. Burger King has a veggie burger, I think. I don't know yeah. if it's vegan. Is oh. It? I, don't, I don't know. I'm just. I think it is. I feel like I hear people talking about how they go there and get them. Hmm. That's good. I will look into that for like when we're driving through the middle of nowhere. Yes. And if there's no Taco Bell. I mean, I always go to the Taco Bell first. (laughs) Of course, of course. If there's only a... I don't want Taco Bell to find out that you're cheating. I know. Oh, I better be careful. I had to delete this part. (laughs) Okay, so um, as I said, McDonald's is testing a vegan burger. But weirdly, they are testing it in Finland. Hmm. Finland, okay. So Finland has fancier McDonald's. Maybe that's why? Maybe. There must be something there that they're like, this is the market. We want to try this out, which is weird. Do you think here would be the market they'd want to try it out? Or like New York or LA. Anyway, um, they've um, called it the McVegan. So they've actually used the word vegan, which is crazy to me. Um, and for now, it's, it is only available in Finland. Um, it's made with um, a soy-based patty um, and vegan McFeast sauce. I don't know what that's supposed to mean, but it, there's a sauce that's vegan on it too. And it's going to be offered October 4th through November 21st. So it's already being served in Finland and it will be being served in Finland when you hear this. Oh, so it's only a it's, limited time? Yeah. I think they're just doing like a test run and see mm-hmm. how it goes. So um, many people have been posting the reactions on the like on social media and the majority of people that have been trying it in Finland have liked it. Okay. Um, someone said after avoiding McDonald's for 20 plus years, I had to try the new McVegan. Um, and then, so McDonald's said that there's no current plans to expand the availability. Um, but with a strong reaction in Finland and America's rapidly growing, um, want for healthy fast food options, it could, it could happen. It could come to America, which would be good. Yeah. I'm like, I mean. Especially for the places <clears throat> like Merced that have very limited vegan options. Yeah. Yeah, and like you're like, oh, I'm Joe Schmo. I got high blood pressure. My doctor says I should watch what I eat. I go to McDonald's. Oh, I guess I should eat this veggie burger. Hey, it's not so bad. <laughs> That's how that Joe, Joe Schmo. Schmo's voice. Yeah, he's from Avon Lake, Ohio. <laughs> <laughs> I got this veggie burger from McDonald's. My doctor says bad. I should walk more, so I'm gonna walk. I to still McDonald's. got my fries and my. Large pop, though. <laughs> <laughs> I love my fries. <laughs> that's hey, something that's me that Joe also, would say. Yes. I know, me too, but... You know. I love my fries, too. I do, I do, too. I only eat them on vacation now, but... <laughs> really? Yeah. That's it. So Fine. that's great. Yeah, I mean... All good that's news. A, that's a good thing. Even Can we I, just I hate do this every time? <laughs> <laughs> I would love the world to be that way. So, so what's been happening at the dollhouse? So I went to New York for the Vegan Food Fest mm-hmm. that uh, Deborah and Vegan Nation were at. Um, and the highlight of Vegan Food Fest for me was this thing called Egg Glue, which was a waffle sundae in a cone, a handheld waffle sundae, if you will. Uh, and so Ariella, who was there with me and lives there, was like, oh, they have a brick and mortar, but they don't have any vegan options at their brick and mortar. Mm. So they were just at the food fest, kind of like how Very Vegan Sundays was. Yeah, it was just a special thing they did. Yeah, so they were just making vegan stuff just for that one day. And they had like three options. I got the cookies and cream, of course, because I'm American. What were the other I'm options? Uh, one was like st- strawberries and something. 
And I can't remember the other oh, one. The strawberries one sounds good too. Though. The cookie one was called Cookie and Dream. I think that's probably what I would went for, but I would have been torn for a second. I the strawberry. strawberry one was very pretty. Yeah, I like strawberry anything. So. Yeah. Um, so I guess they ended up getting so much feedback about it <gasps> that they're going to introduce a vegan item on in the Oh my gosh, yay! Now, which is really awesome. Uh, they were like, oh, if I think they posted something and said like, if a certain, if a, like a thousand people repo or repost this or tag a friend or whatever, if we get a thousand comments saying you want something vegan, we'll do it. And so, and it happened. Yeah, it happened. Yay. I know it's super exciting. Ooh, look at that! The power of the vegan. Yeah, power of the V. So if you guys are in New York area or if you're traveling to New York anytime soon, check out Egg Glue. You won't say thanks be for having sorry. a vegan option. It's it was definitely the best dessert thing that I had while I was there. Mm. Well. Oh, it was a good t- It was a really close tie with the cinnamon snail donuts. Because the cinnamon snail donuts have, like, the whole middle is just filled with chocolate ganache. Oh, my. It's so good. I mean, those were the ones I picked. They have plain ones, too. But who would get that? <laughs> but it makes the donuts so heavy. Why? I'm, like, lifting donut weights. <laughs> You're like, okay, broken even now. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that was Vegan Food Fest. And then... I went to, I tried to go to all new places. I, of course, went to some old places, but I haven't been there in two years, so there was a ton of new places. Um, but I definitely went to Champs because that was David's choice, and it's still delicious you get, as you always. You get one. You get one Yeah, you get choice. one choice. Um, and we went back to somewhere Oh, of course, Cinnamon Snail. Uh, but everywhere else, I think, was new. So we went to the, new, the vegan tiki bar, which is called Mother of Pearl. Highly recommend it. There, it like, sounds cute. You would really like it. It's decorated so cute inside. Like even down to the bathroom. Like they didn't spare anything. Mm. It was just adorable. There was these like little fans that went back and forth. I mean, it's just cute. everything is so cute. Cute. Uh, and there's uh, like a a platter you can get, and it spins. So you can like. Oh, so it's like a lazy season. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And it has all the different. Uh, like the, all the appetizers. And this is all offer. vegan, this place? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Ooh. Cool. And so we got the little spinning thing so we could try everything. And I didn't have one thing I didn't like, which is like really rare for me. Yeah. Like everything <laughs> was delicious. Uh, and when we were leaving, they even said that they had a place right next door or like upstairs. The door is next door, but it's yeah. like upstairs, which he said was more um, a, a, little, a little more like meal-like. Right. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Like a little less bar like. Yeah. Um but I didn't get a chance to go there because we were only there a week, so but that would be another place I would probably check out. Yeah. Uh so that was one that I went to. We also went to Ja Ja Ja, which was uh I wanna say it was vegan Mexican food, but it wasn't only Mexican food because uh one of the things that was ordered at our table was um was like some some Central American country, I think. Mm. So it was like kind of like a mix of different stuff, but everything we got there was delicious. Um, and they have like really cute drinks on tap, like frozen margarita type drinks, which I didn't get, but they looked really good. <clears throat> um, so both of those places I recommend. And have you been to Orchard Grocer? No, but I, I follow them on Instagram. Really? Like, I think it is. Oh, yeah. that's cute. So I'm like, that sounds familiar. Um, so I had never been there or didn't really, I didn't really know anything about it. So we went to get lunch to go because we were working in New York. Um, and so a lot of our meals were kind of like just a quick break from work. Mm-hmm. Um, and so they have like a little deli with some options, kind of similar to like Butcher Sun style food, I would say. And of course I got a Reuben because I'm obsessed with Reuben. Me too. <laughs> but it's also a store, like a vegan grocery store, like a small one. Yeah. Um, and so they had a lot of options of stuff that I haven't seen here. Um, and that coconut whipped cream I showed you the picture of was mm-hmm. from there. there. Mm-hmm. Um, so, cool. and I couldn't buy food to take home because I carried on, but if anyone lives in the area, it seems like a good place to go and get unique vegan items, even if it's just as a gift for someone. Uh, and then I went to Pineapple Express, which the dude was really rude and rushed me in my ordering, so I might not have ordered the best thing, but I got a pineapple float, which was like pineapple soft serve in pineapple juice. So it was basically like a Dole, dole Whip. A Dole Whip, That okay. you get at Disney or something. Yeah, like. so I've never gotten a Dole Whip at Disney because I never wanted to wait in line for it. 
And yeah, there's always the trick. line. There's a trick. There's I'm a not trick. gonna say it on here. Oh, <gasps> because then everybody will know the trick, and I'll tell you the trick after we get off. Okay. There's a trick to get it fast. Really? Yeah. Okay. Great. I look and forward my, to that. My fr- I've learned it from a friend. It's oh, my, yeah. That nice. Goes, that goes to Disney all the time. Yeah. Okay. Good. Okay. Shout out to Jerry. I'm gonna share your secret, but I'm not gonna share it on here. <laughs> Remind um, me. Now. So you. I guess yeah. I guess it was like a Dole Whip then. There's also a place in San Mateo that does a vegan Dole Whip. I haven't gotten up there. I'd never go to San Mateo. So. I know, me either. <laughs> it's I would, drive through I would it. be going there only for the Dole yeah, Whip. I'd be down for that. Yeah. All right. We'll check it, it out. on the list. Uh, and then another place that I believe is newer there is PS Kitchen. I haven't heard of it. Uh, it has a limited menu, um, like just one page, like the like a piece of paper with mm-hmm. just stuff on one side. Uh, but everything we got was really good. A little a little spicy for me. A little mm. too spicy for my taste. So- nor for just reference for a normal person probably fine, fine. yeah <laughs> fine for everyone else uh but i got these fried artichoke hearts which were definitely like the highlight for mm-hmm. me that sounds good i yeah. never had fried artichoke hearts oh yeah i don't but i, I like don't artichoke hearts i, I don't the think i had either I like them fried, this might have been my first time and it was so good so good uh so yeah i really like ps kitchen and and my, for, this isn't necessarily like a vegan place, but we got coffee every single day at St. Kilda, which I highly recommend. So, so good. And the girl who works there is also vegan and they're using either almond milk or oat milk, which I'm not a huge fan of oat milk, so I got almond milk, but these lattes were delicious. Oh, I'll have to keep that on the list for when we go. Yes. Because Matt's a coffee snob. Yeah, so you have to put it on your list. It was so good. And they also have, um, they also sell locally made um, peanut butter cups that are vegan. I love peanut butter cups. And they, ha- they have a, like a pastry case with, with two, thing- two things in the pastry case that are vegan. I really liked their coffee, so I was Ooh. a little obsessed. Uh, and then the only other place I went, which wasn't in New York City proper, I actually traveled upstate to see my sister so in albany is where bourbon and wolves is which i had no idea but we've talked about bourbon and wolves because they were at the la beer vegan beer fest they had a stand there and their okay. food was super good i feel like it vaguely sounds familiar but i was very excited to find out that they were like located there with their brick and mortar so i got to stop in there and get food which made me really it's happy just a, it's just a restaurant yeah, it's it's weird though, and maybe this is an Albany thing, but it was like the main downtown strip. Keep Albany weird. I know, basically, it was like a door to a house. Like I kept like making sure I was at You're the right place. You're walking and somebody and they're like, "Oh, I'm getting my sponge bath." <laughs> if only I could have seen that. So I like op- I like turn the doorknob to the house and I like wa- op- and I open it and I go in and you're like like an entryway and there's some stairs that go straight up. So it's in a converted house. Yeah, okay, I guess that so. would be weird. Yeah. And so I like didn't know if I was supposed to keep going up the stairs because there's no signs once you go oh, into the entryway. Oh, I hate that. Entryway. I hate that. And so I didn't like know what to do. So I like went up part of it, and then there was like a door on the left, and I like had to like peek oh, in the no. window. No, get and your then shit that together. Was it. But no. it was like. I needed one more sign. Like, no, I don't like inside. that. I don't like that. I like things clearly labeled and yeah. dry. No, no, no. I don't like that. It was just so homelike. And I was like, eh, yeah. I would That would make me anxious. <laughs> I don't like that. Like, I don't know where I'm going. I, I don't like that. Yeah. But then once I got in, I saw somebody who was on the same bus that I took to get up there. So I got to talk to her and her dude was vegan. So that was perfect. Then I didn't feel quite so out of place walking into this home. <laughs> uh, but the Interrupting food, sponge bath time. Yeah, no, right. <laughs> the food was perfect, so I can't complain about that. So it was worth that. wandering aimlessly through yeah. someone's house. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yes, basically. Cool. Uh, so that's my New York trip. Um, do you want to talk about your Ohio trip? Yeah, we can keep the trips together. So as I mentioned, I went to Ohio to visit my family. That's where I'm from, so... There was a few new places, um, and then some places I went back to. But um, so I'll start with um, a place I usually go to. I went to Cleveland Vegan, which uh, big surprise is an all vegan restaurant in Lakewood. Um, and it's basically they changed. They said they changed the menu there four times a year. Oh. So basically, it's like a new place every time you go, That's nice. right? I like that. So um, like last time I went, I had progies. I was like, oh god, the progies so good. So like right before I went to the airport because they were closed. Um, that was the only time I could fit it in. 
uh, I went and they do like, you can do everything a la carte or you can like choose like from one thing. You can do like a tasting of like, oh, I like, that. They have, like one, two and three. You can pick one from each thing and it's Love like that. $24 or something for all of it. Yeah. So I got the, um, biscuits and gravy, mm, which were you so are such good. such a sucker for biscuits yeah, and, and gravy. Yeah. And they were, it was pretty spicy. So you probably wouldn't have even eaten it. Yeah. I mean, it was spicy enough. I enjoyed it, but for you, it probably been like, woo, yeah. head blowing off your shoulders. And they had like <laughs> vegan sausage in it. So good. I couldn't finish it. I had to take it. I ate it in the air. I ate it in uh, Minnesota where we had our layover. I ate the rest. Um, that was the last thing I had. That's why I couldn't finish it. But other than that, I also had s'mores. Um, what was it? S'mores. S'mores French toast. Mm. OMG. It was like the whipped cream was like the marshmallow. Oh. Like they had like whipped marshmallow. Yeah. Or like marshmallow fluff. Yeah. 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 And it was even, they even like torched it. So it was like. Oh, nice. Ugh. That's fancy. Oh my god, it was so good. <laughs> it was amazing. And then the oh, maybe we should have marshmallows as a topping for our. I have marshmallows, night. so I can bring them. Okay. Yeah, I have, I have the torch you gave me. Okay. Oh, the torch. Woo! We are going. <laughs> We're flying now. <laughs> I'm gonna have to need oh, an ambulance or all these pancakes I'm gonna eat. <laughs> and oh, you guys can have your waffles, I guess. <laughs> um. And then the other thing I had was a pumpkin like breakfast bake. What is a breakfast bake? I've never heard of that. It was kind of like... It was like hash brown? No, no. It was okay. sweet. It was oh. sweet. Um, let me show you a picture and see if you can kind of decipher. Okay. Thank you. Um, I need some photographic evidence. Oh, yeah. We right. should put it on the I Instagram. Got it. Well, this is the... Um, this was the s'mores. Okay. That looks delicious. Uh, well, I took it sideways. That's what it... That, that was it. Um, is it like cobbler? Is Maybe. it cobbler-esque? Let or me, is it Let me more see like... what they actually called it on the website. Let me see. If it's on there, Cleveland weekend. I'm probably saying the wrong name. Menu. Was it fr- fruity or just pumpkin? No, it was pumpkin. It was like sweet and just pumpkin. Okay. Menus. Cafe menu. Was it everything? Here you we go. It oh, it was amazing. P- oh, okay. Pumpkin French toast bake. So mm. it had cream cheese frosting, um, strudel topping, and coconut whip. Oh, okay. And it was amazing. I wouldn't have guessed that from that picture. Okay, yeah. I couldn't remember. Um, so that was... Everything was so good. That's why I couldn't finish it because I was like, ate everything. Oh, and I also got a um, pumpkin pie smoothie. How was that? It was good. I mean, the food was better, but the pumpkin... I was like, pumpkin, give me more pumpkin. You know, I'll you like my last pumpkin? day of vacation. Tomorrow I got to get back on the wagon. So <laughs> give me... Bring everything over. Do you like pumpkin ice cream and milkshakes? I have never had pumpkin ice cream, but oh. I know I would like it because like, I've never had a... I never met a pumpkin I didn't like. Okay. If they were in my stomach. Maybe I should make that. Hmm? Because I just bought some creamer, the Nut Pods creamer, and I have to make ice cream. Have you had the Nut Pods creamer? You don't really no. drink coffee. No. No, no. no. I, should, I should use that for my um, paper, too. <laughs> 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 so, that, the, like I said, I've been there before, but since they changed the menu four times a year, it was, it's like a whole different time. Every time I go, obviously, it's, it's a completely different menu. So, um, that was really good. So three new places I tried, uh, Poisonberry Bakery, which is an all vegan bakery in Cleveland. Um, very cute. It sounds, it has a cute name. Yeah. I'll, I'll post, I'll post pictures on Instagram. Very cutely decorated. And it was in like a little, it was like on the corner, like a corner store, Mm -hmm. like uh, location. So it was like, it had windows the whole way around and stuff. It was really nice. I got so much stuff there. I don't even, okay. (laughs) I got a little like pumpkin pie. Mm -hmm. I got something that was like basically an apple fritter but they were little or not little but they were smaller and they called them apple critters oh that's cute and those are amazing i got a um cookies and cream cupcake i got a mint uh mint chocolate mint cupcake i got um a did they all blue- have cute names no this is what they were called okay <laughs> they were just called that oh, okay um i got a whoopie pie and i got a blueberry muffin i think that's everything that i got did you share these things with someone I let, oh, and Matt got a truffle, and I split the cupcakes with him. Okay. Okay. I split one cupcake with him. The rest I ate myself. <laughs> I said, this is mine, in this box. All of this, you, mine. You get whatever you want <laughs> in this other box. <laughs> <laughs> and you could get as much as you want, but these are mine. <laughs> yes. You can get as many as you want in your box. Yes. <laughs> That is completely separate from my box. I'm not saying you want to get exactly box. the same box. That's fine. You want to get double? That's fine. But these are my <laughs> these are my treats. 
Um, and then my aunt, like my aunts were with me and they got my cousin, my cousin's vegetarian, heavily leaning vegan. So we got her some stuff because she had never tried it. So uh, it was, it was great. Nice. It was, I was excited about it. And that place is new since the last time you went? Yeah, I believe so. I believe it was, they were doing like, you know, that kind of thing where they have like, they don't have a brick and mortar, but they're at like coffee shops, mm-hmm. that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. I think, I believe that's what they were doing. I'm not positive, but um, they have a, a really nice size brick and mortar now. So nice. And it's in Cleveland. Um, so the next place I went to is called Town Hall, which is um, not all vegan, but they have a lot of vegan options. Cause like, how many times do you go into a place that's not vegan and you can't decide because there's too many options? That never happens. Yeah, no. Like usually you're like, oh, clearly out of the five at best, this is clearly the one that's gonna be the best. Mm-hmm. Like, I had a hard time choosing mm-hmm. what I was gonna get. So we got, um, we basically just got um, as an appetizer, we got like guacamole um, and chips, and it was amazing. Like it seems pretty simple, but it was like, really, really good. And then I got um, basically just a classic flatbread, and they used daya, and it was really good. And it was actually on gluten-free crust. It was, like, vegan and gluten-free. They just kind of, like, will just take, we'll take care of these two things at once. And it was actually amazing crust. I was surprised. Because hmm. I was like, oh, whatever. It's whatever. As long as it's vegan, also. I'll just put up with it. But it was actually, it was really good crust. Um, and then Matt got the veggie burger, and he said that was, like, really good. I didn't have a taste of that, but he said it was really good, too. And my aunt got the veggie burger as well. Um, but there was... There was, like, really good taco. We were supposed to have tacos for dinner, but we ate so much we didn't end up going to the taco place. But there, I was torn between those and, like, these really, like, good vegan tacos that looked on the menu. So it's a really nice area, and, like, the actual restaurant's really nice, too. Um, so that was Town Hall. And then Sweet Moses is a, like, old-fashioned soda shop. Mm-hmm. In, I believe it's, in, like, bordering Lakewood, Cleveland. So it's on that, like, just into Cleveland, I think. Um and it's really cute. Like, the guys there were, like, the white shirts with, like, the black bow tie mm-hmm. and like, the black, like, apron and stuff. Mm-hmm. And, like, they have, like, the rolled-up sleeves. So it's, like, really cute looking. Um, the whole place was, like, super cute. They had um, – I glanced at, like, they have, like, a huge, like, pa- like pastry, like, shell, like, you know, like, display and, like, lots of, like, candies and stuff. And I don't think any of those were vegan. I didn't look super closely, but they have a whole vegan – like. Because they have, like, it's a soda shop, so they have like, a whole ice cream menu, and, like, they do all the shakes and the sundaes and all that stuff, too. Um, they do have a separate vegan menu. Oh, nice. Yeah, so they did, like, scoops. Um, How many flavors? I can't... Uh, I can't remember. I know they have vanilla and chocolate, for sure, because that's what I had. Um, but they... With what the scoops were, they had, like, a lot of different... Op- like, a lot of different... What they did with them. Uh, so they had, like... I got a banana split. Big surprise. Big banana split. And it actually had pineapple on it. Hmm. And I was like, oh, okay. And it was good. Yeah. And they actually, it was weird because they also put a pretzel on it. I was like, oh, this is different. <laughs> um, and then Matt got something called a vegan tin roof, which I was like, what tin is it? Uh, have you roof. heard of that before? No. A tin roof dessert. Uh-huh. So it was basically like vanilla ice cream with other like chocolate sauce and like it said Spanish nuts. They were like sweet nuts on top, like full nuts. Like candied nuts? Yeah, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and then there was like cherries and all that good stuff. Um, and it was super cute and it was actually really good. Nice. I don't know if it was um, quite... My banana split. I don't know if it was quite to Happiness Cafe because, you know, Happiness Cafe does have quite an array of flavors as mm-hmm. far as the scoops. I don't think they had as much here, but, I mean, it was very good. I'd go back yeah. for sure. And it was super cute. They even had like little chocolate... I'll put... I mean, this will be on the uh, my blog eventually. They even had, like, little chocolate bars that had, like, stamped Cleveland, had the Cleveland skyline. So it was, like, really cute stuff in there. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Did they have red sparkly booths? Because that's how I'm imagining it. No, it was pre, like, 50s. Mm. Like, that's more like of a 50s diner style. Mm. This was, like, um, maybe maybe 50s. But it was, it was soda shop, not diner. Okay. So they had, like, the wooden, they had wooden booths. Mm-hmm. Okay. And, like, the swirly back chairs, like... Oh, metal so it's chairs like St. Francis Fountain has the wooden booths. Yeah, like, okay. kind of like that, but way cuter than... That's still yeah. a little bit run down. That's just because they haven't, like, kept it up. Yeah, it's just because how it looked. It's yeah. not meant to be, like, mm-hmm. cute. Um, but this, what is this the is really ice cute. cream one that's on coal in San Francisco? That one's super cute, the way you're describing. Like, they dress super adorable. Yeah. And- and they've definitely kept that one up. They haven't let it get run down. Yeah. I doubt this place was original anything, but they, they, made, they, made, it, they made it look cute. Yeah. So I definitely would go back there. Um, and it was super cute and yummy. So, yeah. Those yes. are the new places I tried. Awesome. Yeah. Sounds like Cleveland's getting pretty vegan. Moving friendly. on up. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah. Not to the east side. East side of Cleveland's bad, but... <laughs> Are you going to have that updated by the time this blog, this podcast posts? What day is no? it right now? Yeah, sure. Yeah? It's the 17th today. Okay. I can do it by the 1st. Okay, cool. I mean, your Halloween costume sounds pretty finished. It, so. Yeah, it is finished. Nice. So. Okay, well, I have a cake that I need to post by the time this comes out, but I will commit okay, to Good, we're both on the hook. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Usually it's just me. I made a cake for my dad's birthday, which... Do, did you ever like the candy bar mounds? No. No, because you don't like coconut. It's shaved coconut, right? Yeah. No. no. Okay. I like coconut. I don't like shaved coconut. What's What kind of coconut is there that's not shaved coconut? Well, I like coconut, like, milk. I like coconut, uh, other things, but shaved okay. coconut is because it doesn't, you can't, it doesn't break down. Mm. Like, you chew it, you chew it, and it doesn't get to a point where I feel like I want to swallow it. Oh. That's what, that's what I don't like about it. It's not the taste. Okay. It's, like, a texture, like, actual, like, oh, okay. physical thing. Yeah. So I'm obsessed with that texture. I love it. Uh, so that probably sounds really it's like weird to you. It's bunny. It's just going and going and going. <laughs> like, I want to swallow this, but it's not chewed up enough. That's what, that's the problem with it. Well, it's funny too, because when I was cutting it, I felt like it wasn't cutting super easily. And I thought it was because the coconut sh- shreds were too Tough long or something. Yeah. yeah. And so I even said out loud to my parents, I was like, oh, maybe next time I'll put the coconut in the blender and I'll blend it up and make it finer mm-hmm. for the inside layer. Yeah. And they were like, no, no, don't do that. Like, the, everyone That's likes that texture. That's not authentic. Yeah, no. I would be like, yeah, blend it up, blend it up, then I can eat it. Yeah. Well, now I know if I <laughs> if make I can you drink something it with a spoon, coconut then it's frosting, good. <laughs> I'll blend it for you. I actually like blending it up, too, because it's more, you can use more coconut and less powdered sugar. So okay. it makes it less sweet, mm-hmm. which for frosting is kind of nice. Because it can, with a lot of frosting, it can tend to get too sweet, I think. Mm-hmm. Uh, So anyway, so the Mounds Cake will be up, um, and I even topped it with those little candy bars that Amy's makes called Sunny Bars. That are like the equivalent of these. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, I guess they're the equivalent of Almond Joy, because they have almonds in them too. But yeah, same, basically. (laughs) Yeah. So that cake came out really good. And I, for my very first time ever, I colored coconut and used that as sprinkles. I've seen other people do that before. And it worked well. And it worked really well. I would definitely do it again. Cool. Now I have a that's, lot of cute that's sprinkles. Correct. I never even would have thought of that. Well, you probably think it's gross. <laughs> but like I think it, like it's a, it's a good idea. Yeah. People that like would be in I, I like I I think I would like the way it looks. Yeah. And it's a lot healthier. It is a lot healthier. So yeah, yeah. it looks cute. Uh so that was that. And then um Amy's also uh reached out and asked me to do a giveaway on Instagram. So I did a uh what they said was, buy something of Amy's. Well, they buy it, but get something of Amy's and then do something with it and then post it. Um, and then they'll give some... I don't. I haven't even picked my winner yet. I need to do that. Uh, so I bought their breakfast. Have you seen these? It's like... I mean, you probably don't buy frozen meals. Most people probably don't. I do for, like, lunch at work, but I don't buy it for anything else just because oh, okay. it's so fast. Okay, and since it's breakfast, well, you like breakfast for every meal. Anyway, you might like it. I thought but it was I like, good. But I don't eat, like, frozen breakfast for every meal. Like, it has to be, like, a real breakfast. Uh, so that's why I wouldn't probably buy okay. it. Okay. Well, I thought it was pretty freaking good, and I don't like frozen meals. I'm sure it's good. I just don't, I just don't want to go there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, so I guess if people are are into buying frozen meals it's vegan and it comes with kind of a lot of stuff you get like the tofu scramble and the sausage and the like country potatoes to get like the whole the whole set yeah like comes all together in this little tray Mm -hmm. that i guess you're supposed to microwave but i put it in the oven because i don't microwave Mm -hmm. Uh, and so i used all of those ingredients uh, to make a bagel sandwich that sounds good. It was so good. I, I know. I'm sure it'd be good. I just don't. I try not to like get. Since I do have like a frozen meal for like lunch at work, I don't try to like do other everything else. You know what I mean? I try to keep it just to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. So, but yeah, that sounds good. Yeah. So that I posted to Instagram if anyone wants to see it. And then I, oh, and then my, it was my nephew's birthday, and he doesn't like chocolate. What? Which means he's adopted. And I was like, he's not related to you. <laughs> How are we related? Yeah. <laughs> Um, so I made him a lemon blueberry cake and he does like Pokemon. So I made him a Snorlax shaped lemon blueberry cake and that is on the blog. I managed to post that one. That's cute. And I like lemon and blueberry. So I have into that too. I think you would like this cake. I even, I made, (laughs) I made two because I'm a pig. And so whenever I make something for someone else, you should put a lot of time and effort into it. You should get, 
you should get it. Yeah, yeah. Agreed. Yeah. So the other cake we ate with like no frosting and it was so good. It was just moist from the lemon, I guess. Didn't mm-hmm. even need frosting. So I'll make it for you sometime. But you can put frosting on it if you want. <laughs> yeah. I, I, can, I can. Just saying. I it wouldn't it hurt. For, I could eat it for breakfast and I wouldn't feel guilty mm. because it doesn't have frosting on it. Right, so then right. it's like, in my mind, know. it's like a muffin. So I can have it for breakfast without frosting and then yeah. for dinner with frosting. Yes, exactly. <laughs> There you go. Um, so, yeah. So, Snorlax cake is up there. It's good for any child or adult who's into Pokemon. <laughs> uh, and then... Oh, and then I did the cookie the cookie square cupcakes I didn't even put on the blog. I may at some point, but it's, it's kind of like little renditions of stuff that's already on there. Mm-hmm. Um, so, it's just a chocolate cupcake, which my chocolate cake recipe is already on the blog. Um, and then I did the cookies and cream frosting, and then I baked chocolate chip cookies and put them on the top. So it was like all the cookie. I don't know. It was fun. <laughs> Sounds good. Uh, and then I already mentioned that I was in Santa Cruz, um, and I went to high tea at Buttercup, which didn't have a lot of vegan options and I guess maybe we're spoiled because we have Weir's yeah um which is of course like all vegan and they have tons of options uh so this place was a little I would say not not as fancy um because they didn't have all the options even their teas weren't fancy like at Weir's they have all the special teas it's like going to crown and crumpet yeah I mean that's what afternoon tea is it's fancy yeah that's the point yeah I felt like all their tea options were just something you could get like at a continental breakfast like at a hotel I love I like the experience of afternoon tea because I'm not a very like pretentious person like I just don't I, I prefer whole normal places, but there's something about afternoon tea that I like, and Mm -hmm. that's part of the experience, I think. Yeah, I think so, too. So I was disappointed in the tea selection, a little disappointed in the vegan options, although what they had was good, Uh, and I did like that when I requested raw sugar, they had it, Mm -hmm. Um, and the creamer options, they have soy or almond, which is nice. That's actually pretty good. Not bad. Yeah, considering it's a lot closer than, you know. And that they probably don't get very many vegans in there, I'm guessing. I don't know. Santa Cruz. The one thing I did not like is that she only gave us one dessert. Like one literally. One mini cupcake. What? Yeah. And they had tea is... four varieties of vegan mini cupcakes. Four. You should and get we got all four one. at Thank least. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I was like, why are you After making this tea? Is like, like a... I want them all. And she's like, well, you can just buy extras, like, a la carte if you want. This place, like, I hope this place was dirt cheap. No, it wasn't. <gasps> and so One mini cupcake for you. Yeah. I mean, that's like... Yeah. yeah. Oh. And we didn't get the scone. Like, there were a lot of things we didn't get because we were vegan. Like, it comes with scones. We didn't get that. Okay. I was like, so, like, like this isn't so bad. Now I'm, like, totally anti this I was place. so mad. I wanted to argue, but I also didn't want to make a scene because we were with others. <laughs> But if I had if it had been just me, I would have like completely chalked this chick into giving me all the flavors, because we got less food than yeah. anyone else would have gotten. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So no, they like no, so no. In, they don't do substitutes. I guess is the thing. Well, then you don't get the business. <laughs> how, do you, how do you like that? Yeah, I probably wouldn't go back. Oh um, my goodness. I was like, oh, this isn't. I was like, this is pretty good. No, that's yeah. not. That's not cool. Yeah. Yep. Unless you're like literally, well, what am I saying? I was like, unless you're literally just going there for tea, but you said the tea wasn't good either. Or it wasn't. I mean, it was fine. Wasn't what it was you just expected. fine. It was just fine tea. It was tea I could make at home. Yeah, it's tea. That's not why you go to home. afternoon tea. Yeah, it's not the like cute teas with the like <laughs> glitter. Listen to me. Roses Listen or... to me. I'm like, it's not like out tea you get afternoon tea. I still like used to get chamomile every time we went to Mirrors, <laughs> which I make at home too. I'm such a hypocrite. <laughs> I know, but it's nice when you go there and the chamomile flowers are floating in your tea, you know? Yeah, it's different. It's different. It's good okay. uh, And then I went to Matari for my first time. I went which there. Which you've been there, yeah, right? it was very um, good. And Sarah's been there, so I was the last one to go. I didn't finally! Know you're existed. the last, finally. Uh, I'm always the last what, one. Uh, so did you get the I've, cold chocolate drink? Yeah. And what is it called? I forgot. Uh, is it just frozen dark frozen chocolate? Frozen dark chocolate? Or? Yeah. Frozen, cho- yeah, it's yeah. Frozen hot chocolate, something like that. I think frozen. it's just frozen chocolate, but it's Maybe. good. And yeah. they even have the whipped cream, the vegan mm-hmm. whipped cream. Yep, yep. So I was sold, and their chocolate is great. And the inside of that place is so cute. It's cute, yeah. And so yeah, we just. I feel like I've walked while. like 
Because you can see it, like, from the main street there. Yeah. Like, it was at front or something. And it's right it's next right to uh, that other vegan restaurant, that Asian Rose one. It used to be called Asian Rose. I don't even know where that is. I don't even know what you're talking about. Anyway. But it is down the street from Woodstocks, too. Oh, yeah. Another so way. Yeah. yeah. So there's... And by New Leaf. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of good stuff yeah. right there. Uh, so I would definitely go back to Matari for sure. Uh, and and they were very nice, too. They were so nice there. And then I went back to Merced, which I do have my Merced blog post up for vegan things at Merced and this time I went to an Indian restaurant that had a buffet and four of the things on the buffet were vegan and it's not a good ratio oh was it a big buffet no there was only like eight things oh okay so half of it yeah that's pretty good (laughs) yeah that was like half of it um it was cheap and they even brought out it wasn't naan. I guess it was roti. I don't really know the difference between naan and roti. I don't even know what roti is. Um, but the naan was not vegan, and I guess the roti was. So they brought the roti out. Um, it tastes a little healthier. Maybe it was wheat. Maybe naan is white flour, and roti mm. is wheat flour. I don't know. I don't know either, because clearly I don't ever go to Indian food because it's usually too spicy for me. <laughs> but this one wasn't. It was great. Uh, and so, yeah, that was my one new thing. Oh, actually, there was another new thing. In the dining hall at UC said they had um, soft serve, vegan soft serve. Wow, that's yeah. a big deal. Yeah. That no, made me I could really never would have, I mean, I wish I was, and then I'm glad, I'm glad I wasn't at the same time vegan at my college, because, Jesus. Yeah, I, I wouldn't have survived. Probably. Yeah. I don't even think I it's easy to survive there. I couldn't even have dreamed of vegan soft serve. I mean, I ate, like, crap when I was in college. Yeah, same. Like, I eat pizza every day. It's bad. I eat, like, ice cream and salad every day. At least you like had I, salad. Yeah, or, like, I would make ramen and put broccoli in it. I like, it was like just, like, the weirdest. I ate, like, carbs 100% of the time. <laughs> I was like, why not? It's good. But, you know. Yeah, I mean, hindsight. Yeah, it's, it's easy, also. Yeah. Um. So that's it for dinner at the dollhouse. Is it time for Wagger Whimper? Wagger Whimper! Wagger Whimper is our segment where we talk about new vegan things that we've tried for the first time, and we decide if it made us wag or whimper. I have a whimper. Big surprise, everyone. <laughs> Breaking news. Robin doesn't like something. <laughs> <laughs> it could have Let been it. Ashley who had the whimper. No one knows. It usually isn't. I, they, they know. They know. Um, Let so them have it. I actually have... So I technically have two two whimpers. Oh boy, double whammy. Um, one is the Califia, Califia. <laughs> oh, we've had this conversation before. <laughs> uh, the Califia creamer that is pumpkin spice. Not you good. don't like a lot of their stuff. Like you have your base, your like staple things that you like, but I feel like when you branch out with them, you never like it. Yeah, like is I don't like I... their eggnog either. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Man. So no pumpkin spice creamer from them. Also, Sarah, who's vegan mademoiselle on the internet, agreed with me that it, she didn't like it either. Mm. That's a shame. So steer clear of that. I know you like everything pumpkin. Just don't. Don't do it to yourself. Okay. 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 Uh, the other thing that I tried that I was not a fan of is the new So Delicious vegan cheese. It comes grated at the store. They sell it at Whole Foods. I'm sure they sell it at other places, but I've been seeing it at Whole Foods. And the first time I got it, I got the cheddar one, and I tried to make nachos. And the way that I tried to make nachos was not by making a cheese sauce like I normally do, but was laying the chips out on the tray and then put sprinkling the cheese on it and putting it in. And it came out, and it was looked exactly the same. Yeah, it didn't <laughs> melt. Mm. There was zero melting happening. Um, and so I like posted it on Instagram stories and I complained about it. And then somebody replied and said, oh, you should try making a, a cheese sauce out of it. Like it'll melt. Yeah. And I was like, okay. And so I made the cheese sauce when I made those, uh, nacho dips for Kimmy's potluck. Mm-hmm. Um, and all of you liked it, but the taste just doesn't do it for me. Yeah. That's okay. Not a fan. Yeah. Like I, I prefer my <clears throat> nutritional yeast cheese sauce over that. Well, I'll tell you, like I... But it was like whatever Daya, I mean, Daya still has its role in my life. But once we were, I think we were recording or we were going to record or something, you made me a grilled cheese sandwich with that freaking chow and I've never yeah. went back. I just don't even care about life or anything <laughs> now. I don't, all I need is my so coconut glad. herb chow and I'm so I'm glad. happy. I'm so glad we made that change. Oh my God. On. Like, never go back. Yeah. So yeah. I don't even try these other things because I don't care. 
Yeah. I'm not cheating on my chow. Yeah. So well, now when I'm picking <clears> restaurants, <throat> I'm like, oh, that pizza place uses Daya and this one doesn't. I'm going to the one that doesn't. Mm-hmm. So it's definitely making a difference in my choices. I mean, don't get me wrong. If I was starving, I'd eat the hell out of some pizza with yeah. Daya on it. But the fact that we have a choice. <laughs> yes. <Yeah>. Is... <laughs> Good thing. Good problem to have. So the So Delicious grated cheese and the Califia pumpkin spice creamer made me whimper. Oh, two bad ones. Oh boy. Okay. So I had a wag. Big surprise there. I seem to be more kind to products than Robin. You probably have a more discerning palate. I'm just like, tastes good enough. <laughs> <clears throat> um, That's why people like to cook for you. <laughs> yeah. Like she won't care. She won't disappoint me. She can make whatever. I'm like, it's so good. I have more. <laughs> <laughs> My uneducated, um, taste um, buds. What, what were you talking about? <laughs> yeah. oh. What? Can taste oh. buds be uneducated? No. My brain is. Like my uneducated Midwest taste buds. But I forgot where I was from, so I couldn't say it. <laughs> <clears throat> so uh, my wag is the tra- is the soft baked snickerdoodle cookies from Trader Joe's. So I've been like a hater, uh, <laughs> hater Joe's. <laughs> I've been a Trader Joe's hater. <laughs> Oh my god, Hater Joe's for, would be the best name for a vlog. That's what I'm going to name this episode. Hater Joe's. I was hating on Hater Joe's. Hating on Trader Joe's for years. Because it's so small. And I'm like, you can't do all your grocery shopping here. Why even go in? Because yeah. it's just another trip. Mm-hmm. So since we started going to Woodstock and Santa Cruz, it's basically connected to a Trader Joe's. So I'm like, okay, I'll just poke my head in and see. Since we're here. And we're not like going grocery shopping. So I was like, okay, I'll see what the fuss is about. Because Lizzie's always talking about Trader Joe's this, Trader Joe's that. So I looked and they had, I started getting some things and I went to the vegan section and I looked up like what things you should try that are vegan at Trader Joe's. So I like snickerdoodles. Um, I never knew like if I liked snickerdoodles and a friend of mine when I lived in Florida that I worked with was like, I'm going to make you some vegan, vegan, she was vegetarian, vegan snickerdoodles. And I was like, oh my God, where have these been all my life? So I've like loved snickerdoodles since. So I wanted to try these and they come in a box and they're like small maybe like twice the size of a quarter like yeah they're way thick but about that yeah, around yeah, yeah. and it's weird because i know it's a soft bake but it really really do like the texture and everything they feel like they just came out of the oven mm-hmm. i mean they're not warm obviously but like they feel like they're just baked yeah that's good it's crazy and that's they're they're so good should taste like. yeah they're they're so good it was like it's bad it's bad i wish i never had them really <laughs> Are they small enough that they could be a topper on a cupcake? Yeah, oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Huh. They would be perfect. I think they would be perfect size for a cupcake. Because I make a really and good snickerdoodle like cupcake, that. and it would be a good garnish. Yeah, and you could even like they're flat enough where you could do something on top of it, even if you wanted, like a little bloop of something, <laughs> just a dollop, <laughs> just a smidgen of something if you wanted to. Yeah. It's, it's flat enough. Yeah, but it's still kind of round. But it's flat Snickerdoodles are not enough chocolate for me. They'll, they do they'll never me. be in my top cookies because there's no chocolate in them. Right. Yeah. They they, they, they like they're, they're like them enough where I forget that there's not chocolate for a fleeting moment. Good. I love they're they're super good. So I had tried these a while ago, but I was thinking like, oh, I haven't talked about them, and um, they're definitely the favorite thing I've tried at Trader Joe's that's vegan. So would you coming say around? They made you wag? Yes. <laughs> So the Trader Joe's soft baked snickerdoodles made me wag. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, I think that's it. That's it. That's all she wrote. So that's the end of episode 25. If you've been listening on YouTube or iTunes and you haven't subscribed, please do. We also are in the process of getting our podcast added to Breaker for people who Maybe. have switched over to Breaker. <laughs> Don't hold your breath. <laughs> We're working on it. I'm using Breaker and I can see that we exist, but maybe not 100% there yet. <laughs> so we're working on that. Um, please leave us comments if they're nice comments. And don't leave us comments if they're mean. <laughs> you can't say something nice. <laughs> exactly. Uh, and you can find us online at dollsanddonuts.com. I think there's a list of all of our episodes and probably other little snippets that Ashley writes up just for you guys because she loves you and if you want to find Ashley on the internet where do they go uh you can find me at theveganadventure.com that has all my social media links email all that stuff on there um and as I already put myself on the hook for 
Um, Ohio, Cleveland will be updated, and I am I probably am gonna also try to get Oahu updated, which I talked about months ago now, so I need to get that updated. Um, coming up, um, I as I mentioned, I'm going to Vegas for Thanksgiving, so that'll be updated once I come back, and I'm staying in town for Christmas, so. And if you want to see anything that we've talked about in this episode, you can probably find it at vegandollhouse.com or on Vegan Dollhouse Instagram. And Ashley's going to post some stuff on our Dolls and Donuts Instagram that she's been eating lately, too. Yeah, which is a lot. <laughs> I try not to spam you with everything I've been eating. Just, just the couple things that I know you guys want to see. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Have a good Thanksgiving. Okay, bye. bye.